Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for this Ask the Expert session. Today we're going to take a look at the automatic point cloud analysis tool in Global Mapper. This tool reorganizes uh, and redesigns some existing functionality, adds some updates to that existing functionality, and introduces exciting new training and custom classification options. For those of you who have worked with Global Mapper for a long time, you'll know that we've had a variety of uh, LIDAR processing related tools, classification tools, feature extraction, segmentation, et cetera. So the goal with this update beyond introducing new functionality is also to get all of this in one tool for a cleaner, more linear workflow, um, especially where shared settings are concerned. So let's go ahead and take a look at it now. When the tool launches, it docks on the right by default, and you would, in general, work down through the tool as you progress through a standard workflow, although by no means do you have to. Um, this is just a good way to kind of walk through and see how everything is laid out. So to start, uh, the input section exists as it did in all our previous tools, and this just allows you to set the data you're working with, perhaps any bounds, filtering, and things of that nature. Each of these main sections is collapsible as well, so you can kind of toggle them as needed. You know, maybe as you work through the tool, you want to hide certain settings to save some space on your display. Below that, the next section uh, covers all of our shared settings. So these are settings that apply to both classification and feature extraction. Um, previously, you know, these were kind of handled across two different tools, and you technically you would have to go back and forth or, or make sure you remembered your settings from one tool uh, to the other. And so called feature models, what these settings do is to help define features to classify, whether that's grounds, buildings, et cetera. Oh, let me make a point here that each entry in, in this tool, uh, whether it's you know a setting, a section, et cetera, all has a little definition to it. And so if we take a look at the bottom info box, as you mouse over or click on certain sections, you'll get a description down there of what it is you're looking at. Um, so that's really helpful. You know, a lot of this tool can have a lot of settings and details. So getting a little bit of help there as to, as to what setting you're working with is, is useful um, to, to help refine your process. Once we've, you know, looked at and set our feature models, um, the built-in ones traditionally, we, we won't adjust those short of uh, doing anything custom in a little bit. So if we explore the classification section, all the built-in classes are still here and can be automatically classified. If we use ground as an example, we'll see that now nearly all classes have two types of classification methods. Uh, Grid-based methods, which are, for those of you who have been around Global Mapper for a while, these are the older, more traditional methods that are used for aerial LiDAR. Uh, and now our newer maximum likelihood methods uh, these are generally more appropriate for terrestrial LIDAR, uh, UAV, maybe photogrammetric point clouds, uh, and other modern collection methods because they're a little more robust. The advanced options for classification is where we can access geometric segmentation. While we can think of this as sort of a step in the maximum likelihood process under the hood, um, we're going to see in a little bit here how this is used as the dedicated tool to set up our custom classifications. So once you've completed a classification process, uh, any feature extraction can be conducted um, as well, remembering that beyond the basic extraction settings, those shared settings will, will apply too. Let's go ahead though and take a look at custom classification. Accessed by enabling custom feature models, uh, this also opens the training samples window. Before interacting with that window though, uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead and create my new class, uh, in this case, airplanes, which are going to try and train and then classify them. So we always recommend uh, segmenting prior to attempting a custom classification. And I did that earlier, so we're not going to get into it now in detail, but what we'll do is take a look at uh, coloring my point cloud by segment. And so in this case, um, each specific color represents an individual segment of a feature. For example, airplane wings versus the fuselage. This is really powerful, so it's worth taking a quick glance at segmentation um, 
since it gives us such a variety of ways to determine which attributes will be most useful in identifying a feature. Um, for example, there's a color option here, and you might see that um, segmenting based on color will help you define a really unique feature. Um, think white paint stripes on black pavement as an example for that. So um, anyway, what I'm going to do here is use uh, the segment selection tool, and I'm going to select the entirety of an object, the airplane, and all the segments that make it up. I'll collect this sample, add it to the airplane, and then repeat. And we're going to use, uh, in this case, these two airplanes as a, an example to train the airplane class on. Training happens reasonably quickly, and so if we expand the statistics, we'll see they're not, uh, we'll see they're now populated. Um, and so I could go ahead and choose to classify from here. For the sake of time, let's go ahead and look at what I did earlier. I'll now color the ladder by classification, and we'll see that the airplanes are showing up in their own color. And this is just a randomly assigned color to the airplane class that I made earlier. Uh, you can always go ahead and ingest that after the fact, or really even before you classify, so that you have a, a color you expect there that's easily handled in configuration. If I zoom out, we'll see that all the remaining airplanes were identified and classified based on the two I used to train the class earlier. So this is just a quick introduction to what is a really powerful new tool. Uh, I hope everybody has a chance to go ahead and download the app and check out the updates. Uh, thanks for watching.